Hi, and welcome back to Gavin Sonics B. A couple of weeks have passed. Christmas has come and gone. We're currently in the week between Christmas and New Year. Um, Katie didn't go into hospital in the end. Um, she tested positive for uh, COVID uh, on the morning of going into hospital, so that's been delayed. And she'll probably, uh, she didn't actually develop any COVID. Uh, and tested negative a few days later, but it screwed up everything. And uh, so she'll be going into hospital at the end of January, um, so a few weeks time. Um, so uh, I've been making a little bit of progress in amongst the uh, Christ uh, Christmas festivities, um, and uh, mainly sorting out what I need to do in order to complete the engine. So it's firewall forwards, really. Um, so I'll show you what I've been up to. I've done some work on the exhaust manifold. Um, I've drilled and fitted the uh, exhaust temperature probes. Uh, one on each Pipe, one for each cylinder, and uh, and also wrapped it with the um, heat insulation wrap, which I think is uh, fiberglass. Secured it using um, stainless steel uh, jubilee clips. That's what we call them in the UK, anyway. Um, and uh, that's all ready to rock and roll. So that's going to be going out into the garage in a few moments. Um, once I've had something to eat for lunch. And it's going to be secured onto the engine. What I've also been looking at is the turbo cooling system. And um, I've made a plenum for the turbo cooling radiator which looks a bit like this and secured a fan to the back of it the plenum is deeper than the actual uh, radiator to allow the air to it's, it's a pusher fan so it's pushing the uh, air through the radiator um, so there's a a gap between the fan and the radiator to allow the air to spread out over the entire radiator. Um, so that's ready to mount. I haven't quite worked out where I'm going to put it yet. Um, it's probably not going to go where the um, where Sonics put it. Um, I don't think it's critical on positioning. It just needs to be able to blow some air through. Um, the radiator um, to cool the water. I've gone for a different pump. Um, I did buy one of the Toyota Prius um, pumps, but I've read so much online about how people are having real problems with the um, clone P, uh, Prius pumps, unless you actually get a, a bona fide A1 from uh, from a Toyota agent, um, they tend to be Chinese copies, um, which are there are thousands of on the internet to buy. And from what I understand, these um, can last as little as five hours flying time before they pack up, um, or five hours operating time, uh, whatever. Uh, so what I've done is I've uh, I've gone for a German one. It's a Bosch. Um, it's for an Audi um, Audi car, um, and is an auxiliary pump, uh, water pump uh, for an Audi. And being German and Bosch, I mean, the world will end before the pump breaks down. Anyway, so uh, that's that. What else have I been looking at? This is the Sonics supplied header tank for the turbo. Um, 
it is actually a, a modified by Sonics version of this one. And this is uh, widely available on the internet from uh, China or Hong Kong. Um, and what they've done is uh, they've actually cut that bit off and welded up the hole. They've cut that one off and welded up the hole as well. And they put a new bigger diameter pipe in there and one down here. Um, which suits the installation that they made. It's not possibly going to suit the installation that I've got. So, oh, and this one is extremely cheap on the internet. And this one, because obviously they've had to cut it, weld it and whatever, is quite expensive uh, for from uh, Sonics. Um, I've also got the thermostat. Um, I've gone for a different thermostat housing than the one that uh, Sonics um, use because I was worried about the um, thermostat restricting the flow. Um, they use a gauge, um, one of these that's made for uh, mounting a gauge on. Um, and obviously the gauge doesn't protrude into the water flow. Um, and it's a lot smaller than this. Um, but uh, this one's made specifically for um, automotive use, um, really. Um, and uh, there's a lot bigger diameter all the way through. Um, so I've had to order a few bits and pieces to adapt between all these different things um, but that's another story so I sat down for a couple of days worked out what it was I needed to do and this is the list of parts I needed to get in order to make all that fit together and work properly um, uh, along with obviously the turbo the turbo is laying on its front at the moment um, and basically uh, oil goes in through a port on the top comes out through a port at the bottom and then is recirculated around via the engine the water goes through there and out the other side um, so the thermostat will be sitting there like that when the adapter comes to actually screw it in so that's what's happening there i've had to order a few other little bits and pieces i found that the um, rubber um, reducer that sonic supplied um, is way too big for this turbocharger and uh, so I've ordered one that is the correct size to go on there. So I don't want it to leak or push off under, under pressure. Um, well, actually, that's the bit that's sucking, isn't it? Well, anyway. Um, and uh, found all the gaskets and things that I need. They're all metal, the, uh, the gaskets for the turbocharger. Never used, it, or, and the exhaust actually. They've got metal gaskets to go on the exhaust ports. Um, never used metal gaskets like that before. So be interesting to see um, how that works. Um, there's no mention of using anything to seal them. Um, so we'll just crank it all together and see what happens. Um, so I'll be going out in the garage shortly. Um, what I've also had to do, there was an inordinate number of um, pipe and hose fittings um, in the kit, like, you know, the, uh, the turbo kit, and I couldn't work out what they were all for. Um, so I had to sit down with the, uh, with the manual and go through each page. Um, they're mainly for the oil um, system. And... Um, I had to 
first of all print out the instructions, various different instructions for doing various different bits. And then I made a little kit up. So that's page 53 of the manual. That's page 54 of the manual. That's page 55 of the manual and page 56 of the manual. So all the bits are separated, ready to go. As I said, really, it's a question of getting the engine uh, complete. Um, I've received my third set of um, engine push rods, which I got from the UK at about a third of the price from, from Sonics. Um, and that's another story, which I'll tell you when I'm in the garage. Um, it's a, a cautionary note. Um, and it's worth checking the push rods that you've got with your Aero V Turbo kits because uh, there is an issue with one particular batch that uh, I've discovered. Anyway, uh, that's all from me for the moment and uh, so uh, like that we'll go off to the garage. And is it by magic? We're in the garage. Um, so it's a wet, wet rainy day, um, overcast, a bit chilly. So the best thing to do is to stay indoors and uh, mess about with aircraft. So uh, here I am in the garage again. Um, I've done a little bit of work um, in between the two finger clicks. And uh, what I've done is I've... Um, <laughs> Changed my mind about uh, the layout of the firewall a bit um, and uh, basically because where I had decided to put the RDAC um, data gathering unit that connects to all the sensors on the engine, um, it was too far away from uh, the cylinders for the um, exhaust gas probes uh, temperature probes um, uh, and they are well the leads on them are special um, and it's something to bear in mind when you're or if you're putting a data gatherer and it's got um, the um, temperature sensors attached to it that you need to put it somewhere um, so that the leads actually reach because you can't extend them um, without uh, using the right kind of wire or, or something. It can mess up the uh, the readings anyway. So I didn't want to take the chance. So uh, I've relocated it um, and uh, it's now um, located on the top part of the firewall, um, not far off centre. Um, from the uh, from the center of the aircraft I shall show you what I mean uh, to do this I've had to take the top part of the firewall off as you will probably remember I had it all clear code in place I knew I was going to have to take it off or potentially take it off at some point um, because as you can see the fuel tank is immediately behind it so you can't drill any holes through the firewall um, without drilling into the um, into the fuel tank and you can't put any nuts or captive fixings on the back of the firewall because there's no space um, there's a few millimeters um, between the uh, the top of the firewall and the front of the fuel tank so the only thing you can do is rivet things onto the firewall but from the other side so I fitted this is the new position of the RDAC unit and I've also located my um, header tank for the water cooling system for the uh, turbo here I've decided to go with the Chinese cheap one which um, I've ordered some larger barbed connectors to go on it and I'm going to talk to my um, local um, welding guy and basically have him 
uh, cut these ones off, drill them out, and put some uh, larger ones. So they're um, 10 millimeter OD and 7.5 millimeter uh, internal diameter to match uh, all the rest of the pipe work and the turbo radiator. Um, so if I flip this over, you can see I've basically riveted on that side and that should be fine. And, uh, I've made brackets to screw the RDAC unit to and a bracket to bolt the header tank to. Um, this means the turbo radiator will definitely not be going in this position, which is where Sonics would put it. I'm going to stick it down on the left hand side, somewhere near to the air vent, the side air vent that goes out of the cowling, somewhere around there anyway. Um, so I'm just about to uh, put the top of the firewall back and uh, I'm going to rivet the, the top of the firewall onto the aircraft um, and uh, so we're actually going to make a step forward today because uh, that was one of the last things that needed riveting on the fuselage um, bar the um, stuff for the wing uh, um, fitting the wings um, and uh, I've also made some other decisions where I had originally put the RDAC unit. I have now relocated the um, oil catch can. This catch can is a Sonics product. It's aluminium, very light, um, and basically um, it... Uh, collects any um, oil that comes out of the top breather on the engine. There are many ways that you can fit this. Um, a lot of people fit them around about here, up quite high, so that they can then drain the uh, anything that it, it catches back into the um, little sump at the bottom via the side uh, connector. Um, I'm not going to do that. I think it's far more useful to keep an eye on how much oil is being blown out. Um, and so as part of the maintenance um, procedure, um, I'm going to put a drain on the bottom of it um, with a stopcock and um, periodically drain it and measure how much oil we're actually losing um, give me an idea of how the engine's um, bearing up um, it can um, be a good indicator um, that you have a problem uh, with the engine so um, that's what i'm going to do so i've mounted mine low i'm not going to feed it back into the uh, into the sump at the bottom of the engine um, just going to collect it and uh, monitor the oil level, um, which of course you should check before you fly every single time. Uh, apart from that, um, I've got the uh, capacitor to fit, um, and uh, that's the firewall done then really. So um, I'll busy away and reattach the, uh, the top end of the firewall and we'll have a look at it after I've done that. More later. So, after a couple of hours of fiddling about, um, there's the firewall, or the top part of the firewall, all riveted and in place and uh, everything else is connected back up again. And uh, you can see on this side the items that I've attached to it. Um, and if I pull out a bit, there we go. You can see the 
hold of the engine bay. So the next thing to do is to position the um, turbocharger. Now I can't do that at the moment uh, fully because uh, I'm waiting for that delivery of uh, 110,000 little bits and pieces um, to for the turbo cooler system to arrive. Um, I should be here in a few days. Um, uh, it's currently New Year's Eve at the moment. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, and uh, and so I've got to wait uh, a few days. Um, so it'll be here between Tuesday and Friday, I think, of next week. Um, before I can uh, finish it off because there are some fittings which need to be uh, screwed into the back side of the um, turbocharger for the cooling system which I won't be able to get at properly once the turbocharger is in place and um, fully fitted. So I'm going to have a little bit look at some of the wiring um, I've got to uh, sort out the um, push rod uh, push rods for the engine so I'm going to do that over the next couple of days um, there's a little bit of um, tube work to do for instance there's a tube that runs from here down to the um, oil pump and this part of the oil pump is used as a scavenging pump for the turbocharger. Um, so it's uh, sucking the oil and uh, it ends up depositing it back into there. Um, so there's that little pipe. Then we've got a fitting that screws into there, which has got the oil pressure sender attached to it, a T-piece and an aluminium tube which runs through and attaches to this fitting here and then on this side that runs off to the oil filter for the turbocharger and then from the oil filter to the turbocharger and then from the bottom of the turbocharger there's a pipe that runs back all the way round to there. Um, so I've got to make up those pipes, which I've looked on uh, the internet, uh, watched a few YouTube videos on how to do it. For the metal, uh, the aluminium pipes, um, you're going to need a flaring tool, a 37 degree flaring tool. It's the same angle that's used on brake, um, brake pipes. I've got a brake pipe flaring kit, which looks a bit like that. Um, and there's your 37 and a half degree um, flaring bit. And this is a, a locks onto the outside of the tube um, to allow this to clear the tube out into these sort of countersinks here. And if you're doing the opposite part, there's a load of little gadgets there to, uh, to do the mating half, but we won't be doing that because the mating part is actually um, a pre-made connector. Anyway, so that's what I've been up to. I think I'll probably call it quits there. Um, what may have uh, confused a few people is uh, me talking about cooling and turbochargers. There are two cooling systems on the Aero V Turbo. There's the one that's fitted to the engine, which is an oil cooling system. And that is achieved by this top mount oil cooler. That cools the oil that runs through the engine and also through the turbocharger from the engine. But on the Aero V Turbo there is a second um, cooling system which is a water based 
um, cooling system, or let's say wet based cooling system, because you use non water coolant in it. But anyway, um, a coolant liquid. Um, but anyway, uh, and that is an add on. And that was done um, because the original uh, turbochargers that were fitted to the Aero V turbo um, were experiencing um, over temperature, um, not whilst in flight, but when the engine had been turned off. The residual heat from the hot side, the exhaust side of the turbocharger, worked its way through and cooked the bearings in the middle of the turbocharger um, so uh, that resulted in turbocharger either failing to spin up on the next occasion or basically um, not working properly um, which you don't want really um, so they did an, uh, an added system um, kind of like um, I won't call it an afterthought but it's kind of grafted on um, and it uh, uses a couple of um, uh, ports on the turbocharger that are designed for cooling. And uh, it pumps water with a little electric pump um, through a little um, additional radiator, which is normally like by Sonics in this area here. It's fan assisted with a fan and um, the idea of it is that during normal operation, normal flight, um, it does nothing at all. Um, it's off basically. Um, but it has uh, a thermostat on it um, and if after landing um, and whilst you're taxiing back uh, to the parking or after you've turned the engine off, the temperature uh, rises above uh, 180 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which I think is about 83 degrees centigrade, something of that order anyway. Um, it turns on the, the water pump and a little electric fan and um, provides some cooling for the um, turbocharger. And it turns itself off again um, when the temperature drops below uh, 160 Fahrenheit, which I've got no idea what that is in centigrade. Um, and uh, that cures the, the bearing overheating issue with the turbocharger um, and obviously increases the life of your turbocharger, which is good because we don't want it to pack up. Um, but... Um, I th I'm going to put mine in a different place. I've seen other people putting theirs in various different places. Um, it uh, needs to be borne in mind it only operates when you're on the ground. Um, it's not something that, that is necessary to keep the uh, turbocharger cool whilst in flight. It's just when um, the whole thing is um, cooling down um, or getting hot when you're taxiing or cooling down after um, it's been running. So that's what the, uh, the turbo cooler is all about. Anyway, that's enough for me for now, rabbiting on about nothing. So I'll call it quits for this video and uh, I'll see you next time. And uh, I think we'll be finishing off the saga of the um, push rods. See you soon. Happy New Year. More later.